I hear the cake will be cut later. Um, we will now move on to uh, listen to a testimony. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We are about to listen to a testimony from from Pastor Henry Marix, all the way from Nigeria, elder brother to Pastor Kingsley. able to get it to work at some point. Um, <laughs> okay, we'll move on. Um, on the pathway of destiny, um, we believe that God maps our pathways. How we will go, where we will go, how we will get there. And I personally would like to give honor to whom honor is due. That on my pathway of destiny, God positioned some people. He positioned them right when I needed them the most. He ordained it without me knowing what was in line and what was in store. And for many of us here, that has been our experience. That on our journey, God positioned people at different steps to take us all where we need to be. Pastor Kingsley is not a loose cannon, he came from somewhere. And the reason why we're here today is because he has submitted himself to be trained to be equipped, to be activated, and to be released. Amen. Amen. And so we don't just jump out and do things. Even when we think we know what we're doing, we need help. And God positions that help. And so today, for many of us seated here, uh, we have been trained. We have been taught. And we are here today to testify of the goodness of God. And part of what we are celebrating here is the fact that God, in his mercy and in his love, you heard Pastor King's this testimony of where he had been and what he had been through. At some point in his life, it was destined that he would be at the place where he would be ministered, where he would minister to and taught the ways of the Lord. And so we know today that this ministry will succeed. We know that this ministry will prosper because of what he has learned. Amen. Church will not be church as usual. It will be a church with a difference. Amen. And I just want to acknowledge Apostle and Pastor Grace, our overseers. If you have been trained in the school of ministry, can you please rise to your feet? If you have been trained, by Apostle and Pastor Grace. Can we all rise? Amen. Amen. And can we all acknowledge what the Lord has done through Apostle and Pastor Grace? Everybody's 
government is a minister, ordained to be ministers, not because they just woke up one morning and decided to be, but because even though they may have heard God, they submitted to be taught, to be trained. And I just want to encourage everybody here, you may be pastors of churches, wherever you may be. Um, if you got it wrong when you started, there's an opportunity for you to get it right. Amen. And we just want to thank God for Apostle and Pastor Grace. Can we put our hands together as we acknowledge them? Please be seated. Please be seated. Amen. And I'd like to take this opportunity to invite Pastor Grace. You will hear from her. When you hear from them today, you will know for sure why I have given this testimony I gave now. Amen. Pastor Grace, please come. Please put your hands together. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's with joy that we came this way to be with all of us. And we thank the Lord for what He's doing. And the Bible says that in 2 Timothy 2 2, that what you have learned and heard of me, commit it to faithful men who will. Take it, commit it to others also. Amen. So all the brethren you saw standing by the grace of Elohim, allow me to say faithful men. Things have been committed into their hands, and today we are here to celebrate, to give the Lord praise, you know, for one of our brethren ready to commit to other people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To keep expanding the gospel, because not one person can do it not one person at all. So the gospel is no more about one person being the clergy and every other person sitting and being the laity. It's about the priesthood of every believer. Hallelujah. I've got something, you've got something. Amen. There's something you have, I don't have. There's something I have, you don't have. So the gospel is about we doing it together. I can't take the whole of London if really Christians were waiting for the return of Elohim to come back, I can take the whole of London all by myself. No. We need their brethren in the church, all of us Christians, you in that corner, my, me in that corner, the other sister, the other brother, and we are raising the banner of Jesus Christ on every corner, and then we will spread this gospel to every creature. And by the grace of God today, we are here by his grace to also give him praise that the banner of Jesus will be raised in this community. Amen. And that's why we're here. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. And we are only in these few minutes, Father, speak to our spirit man. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Not really a message, but a kind of testimony of the um, evangelist Kingsley and then Sister Edna. The first time I met Sister Edna, she was led by the hand. She was wearing a bathroom slippers, unable to walk, and then the husband was bringing her in into the school of ministry. And I'm like, be the nurse by profession. I knew what I was looking at. So immediately I went to sit by her. And then when they finished, when she was going, I knew she couldn't walk out by herself, and I came to help her. She says, I'm fine, I'm only going to take some medications and then to come back. So I could see the trough, you know, where she's got um, the everything. Just looking at her from head to toe, you'll just really think that, well, to God be the glory. We don't own life, but with what the eyes could see, not many much. But that same day, she said something to me. And one of the things when I was conversing with her is that I thank the Lord that I'm alive. And that the ministry that Jesus, the calling of God, in my life, in my husband's life, will be fulfilled. Amen. This sickness will not even stop me. Amen. The first day I met her. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And for me, that was it. And if we go to put everything together for them, it's Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 3. Um, let's start from no, verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, 
to go into a place which he should after receive an inheritance. Obey. And he went out not knowing whither he went. Just this is the testimony I got from both of them. Both in their meeting, they are getting married, and even in ministry, in their health. I can sum everything up in Hebrews chapter 8. This is all I can say I heard from them after that day and the coming weeks. Everything goes back to he was called to go into a place. And then we call him Brother Kingsley Evangelist. Kingsley just said to me, um, they were very open, very, very open people. And he was able to tell me, the Lord asked me to marry her, and I did. She went through the valley of shadow of death. And by the grace of God, I will stand by her till the end of my life. And I'm like, I've not said anything to you. I didn't even ask you. And then the wife just said to me, again, not knowing the husband has spoken to me, I will stand by him. There is a call of God upon his life. And as long as I live, that ministry will be fulfilled. I will go to work.